Uh, amen. And we thank God and we praise God for this great preaching of the gospel. Amen. Some 40 plus years traveling this country, the breadth of this country, preaching the uncompromised word of God. Would you put your hands together as the evangelist Rocky Warren comes to us on tonight? Come on, saints. Yeah. Yeah. We thank God for being here tonight. Thank God for His mercy, and we know His mercy endures how long? Forever. His mercy endured not only forever, but to all generations. Amen. And it's the Lord's mercy and His goodness that we are not consumed. The song says, Great is our faithfulness. But it's not enough for God to just be faithful because He's already been faithful. But His expectation of us is for us to be faithful. Yes. Be thou faithful until death. Close your eyes, Lord, we thank you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to say something that will bless those of you, those that are here. God, we thank you for giving us another opportunity to say something not just positive, but something that's needful. Yes, yes, yes. yes. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord another hand. Yes, yes. You may be seated if you can. We thank God for Pastor Williams. Uh, him. God for the overseer of this particular assembly. Pastor Todd, let's give him a hand. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. And we know the weather is treacherous out there. Somebody said, don't speak it, but you don't have to speak it. It is what it is. I think we're living in a time that people say, don't speak things. But it's not about speaking things, it's about looking at it for what it is worth. Yes, yes. Amen, somebody. And this is the hour. That we live in. The church is in a crucial hour. Yes. And when I say the church, I'm not talking about the institution of the building, but the people that are part of the institution. No longer is evangelism a big part of our assemblies. And some people don't like that. But the purpose of evangelism is to reach people. The purpose of a revival is to revive those that once was in a position of already revived. Revival is from the church. Evangelism is from the world. All right, all right. Once the church becomes revived, yes. then we will see not only a move of God, but a move of the people in the church. I'm convinced, and I'm already preaching that, we, we are praying for a move of God. It's almost like God is not moving. But God has already moved. He's already ordained some things. But we are not moving where God has already moved. Come with me to the book of Acts, chapter number 20. I promise you, I won't keep you long. Verse number one. I want you to read because I want this to penetrate your thinking. I'm the type of preacher that I challenge people's thinking, their thoughts, what they're thinking, because it's very important. 
for people to think about what they are part of. Paul here is ministered in Greece and Macedonia. When Paul received his transformation, he transformed himself in the transformation. Now hear me today. See, we think God's going to do all the work, but God has already done it. It's your job now. And verse number one says, And after the uproar was seized, Paul called to him the disciples and embraced them and departed for where? For to go in to Macedonia. And when he had gone over those parts and had given them much exhortation, uh -huh. he came into Greece. In other words, he didn't stop because of persecution. That's right. He didn't stop because of the numbers. All right, he all didn't right. stop based upon other people's feelings. Uh -huh. But he kept it moving. Yes. Because the power of God was in him. I believe in strategies. I understand systems. The church religion is a belief system. The church is a part of a system. I'm talking about the institution now because Jesus came preaching kingdom. Jesus really didn't preach church. But what about when he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church? That ain't a translation. Mm -hmm. When you dig a little deeper, you will see there were already churches before Jesus came. But the translator said church, but Jesus, when he prayed, he said, Thy kingdom. Um, Thy will be done. In where? On earth. As it is. In heaven. In heaven. In other words, Jesus was talking about manifestation. Yes, sir. That would take place in the earth. Keep on reading on, so I ain't going to keep going on. He goes to the Father, the writer says, and there are both three months. You mean to tell me that Paul was in one place three months? I don't. Three months? Well, he's been here too long. He got to get up out of here. But when you're doing effective ministry, you don't quit. Right. You understand that there's a reason. I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm not just doing what I'm doing just to be doing it. But there's a purpose why. See, we got people preaching just to be preaching. Right. Saying stuff just to be saying. Pastoring just to be pastoring. Just doing stuff, Pastor Tom. But it must become intentional. Yes, sir. Give it just to be given. And then some people give, some people don't because they don't understand the purpose of ministry. All right, all right. Somebody told me, I don't know what they said, well, we see your little ministry on TV. I said, no, do you know I pay for that? <laughs> I ain't stupid. Do you think I would invest that much money? Right. <laughs> to be doing the work of the kingdom. See, it's, it's, not, it's not the sinner. It's the saints that don't know what's going on. Yes. Somebody told you, yeah. God help me. Help God me. help me. The saints can't come to church because of the rain. But if Beyonce was in town, right. oh, y'all ain't gonna sit up with me. If the Hawks was playing, if, if, if the football team was playing, they're gonna pay a ticket. 
and it will go to the dead. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying up in here. It's the brain. I don't know what the brain is playing to do. They don't cancel games just like that. They'll wait till the storm passes. Oh, I feel this. Right. They, I don't know what I'm saying up in here. They, they may stop play for a minute. They'll wait till they stop thundering again. You like me. And they'll sit there in the saints. But the saints ain't even coming to the saints. Well, as I was gonna come, but it's bad out there. Tell your boss man that on Monday. All right. <laughs> I was coming to work, but it's bad out there. I'm gonna draw the work in the rain, in the storm. Let me see what happens though. Some of y'all are gonna tell the truth, and it's the truth. Mm -hmm. But Paul was so consistent. I love Paul because. Paul is in such a place of consistency. If you read about Paul, just don't look at the power and the miracles, but look at the commitment. Somebody needs to write that down. Look at the commitment of the disciples. Look at the commitment of Peter, Paul, and John the Baptist, and John the Revelator. Look at the commitment. We get excited about power. Yes, sir. Jesus told him, don't be so excited about uh, the demons or something to you, but you should be glad your name is written in the Lamb the book of the life. Now I realize that there's something better than this. You got a small window to get stuff done. You got a small window, Pastor told me about uh, Brother James Edwards passing this morning. And we, we, we get upset and we be like, oh, people leave it. What do you expect? You better thank God that you still. All here. right, all right. Because if I don't smoke that way, probably don't talk the way. It's the truth. They died too soon. No one even say who died too soon. You just better make sure you don't die. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Y'all didn't leave that. Yes, sir. Keep on reading. I want you to get this. Keep on reading. What else it says? I want to hear y'all read. I'm already reading. So, verse number three. I want to hear y'all read. What does it say? Verse number three. They are Come on. And when the Jews laid wait for him, they were trying to kill him. Come on. Come on. Keep on reading. They accompanied him into Asia, Sopata of Berea, and of the Thessalonians, Aritichus, and Secundus, and Gaius, and Billy, and Timotheus, and of Asia, Pachicus, and Trimus. All right. <laughs> You did yeah, fine. Look at that word. Don't be don't be intimidated by words. Just pronounce them. I know what they tell you. Chat, 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 chat. These going before terrify us at Troy. Verse number six says what? After the days of them, let me pray again. Came unto them to Troy and find. Well, we are born seven days, that means stay. Yes, sir. They weren't going to be intimidated. Right, sir. Y'all are too intimidated. Pain, sickness, financial difficulties. Well, I don't know what we're going to do. I'm going to do whatever you're doing, trusting God. I'm going to put myself in a position to receive a miracle. I'm looking for a manifestation miracle. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. I'm looking for a breakthrough. I'm not waiting on God. God is waiting on me. All right. Keep on reading. What else it says? Come on. What did Paul do? All preach to them. And said what? Ready to depart on the mall. And that's what we're going to see y'all day. We're not going to waste a lot of time. Don't only get yourself to eat and get ready to move. 
Y'all quiet up in that ass. The pastor tired, you got to go easy on the folks. We're a bit too easy on them. It's time to do the work of the kingdom. People are dying. People are leaving that. Sinners, they there down the street. I think it's a big old uh, event center. Across the highway, and I was preaching for Pastor Tiggs, and last time I was here, and that place was packed to capacity. Mm. I think they have all kind of rappers and celebrities there, and this and that, and I'm quite sure tonight it's going to be packed. Come on, somebody. Yeah. But we, it's a mindset. Let me tell you, the biggest problem with evangelism and outreach, sometimes we don't even know, we need to use that word evangelism. Just do something for God. It's when some souls for God because people are quick to say, but well, I'm not a part of the evangelism. All right, yes. I, well, I, I, I'm not a part of the, I'm a part of the usher board. <laughs> I'm a part of the choir. And, and I ain't knocking anything, but sometimes we got too many departments that people make. It's not the wrong with a department. But people use departments to make excuses. Right. Evangelism is really not a department. It's something that was commanded for us to do. Go on into the highways and the heavies and compel them to come. Right. One plant, another water, God give the increase. When you do your job, uh -huh. that's all God expects of you. Right. And you will receive a reward. You will. One shall chase the what? And I'm making an application. And two shall do what? All you need is somebody to catch the burner. All right. We're trying to yeah. win people to God without a motive. Uh -huh. I don't know why people. How the the preacher's got to have a word for. Yes, sir. That's what they told me. Paul had a burden. He said, come on, we're going to feed you, but it's time to get up out of here and go somewhere else. No matter what is threat, no matter what the threat is, get out of your comfort zone. Oh, I'm so comfortable in this wonderful church. And we are packed. We got a great choir. We got a great organist. We got great singers. Uh, I don't know why we have to go in a little old hole. I don't know. I could just hide in the crowd. I don't have to spend my money. Because now the light bill is coming to my house. It's in my name. Well, it's in the church's name, but it's really in my name. Because if it don't be paid, the lights have got to be turned on. But when you have a run, you say, mm -hmm. I don't care what it takes. Yes. I'm not going to quit. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. You don't have to make apologies for people. You just keep on doing what you're doing. Come on, y'all hear what I'm saying? Pastor Ty, you don't have to. Well, I don't know where the people are. I don't know where they are. <laughs> you know how people say, well, I, I don't know where, what happened tonight, but, but it, it, it's not that. People make choices what they want to do and what they don't want to do. And you can't. Twist people's arms when it comes to their choices. You got to be glad that this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm glad for the opportunity where there's two or three that are gathered together in my name. We should be praising God. No, it ain't we. You should be praising God. If nobody else prays, I'm going to bless the Lord. All right. I'm going to magnify the Lord. Yeah. I'm going to make a joyful Lord. Somebody lift your hands and just praise Him. Yeah. Not in the proper place, but as a in the visual.
is your mindset. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, if you give a dime, then I give a dime. No, it ain't about what they do. Right. It's about you mm -hmm. and your commitment. Because I had a TV on an aspect. On us. And he said, man, if you're not making money off of what you're doing, why are you doing what you're doing? I said, ministry. Chamber Come on. where they were gathered together. Keep on reading. Next verse. You got it? Certain young man. Paul preached. He preached and preached and taught and a certain not an old man. A young man. He got sleeping like something like all night. He got sleeping. And one pair of tickets to what he was doing. And what happened to him? Not just a sleep, a deep sleep. Keep on reading. We don't want conviction. We don't, we don't like conviction. We don't 
don't have to be convicted. Young people don't even know what conviction is. That tug it, that drives you, that tell you, I got to do more because God's been too good to me. Hallelujah, somebody. God's been too good to me. And that's the type of fire that Paul has had. He wasn't intimidated with Peter. He wasn't intimidated with the rest of the disciples. He knew I got an assignment to fulfill. And that assignment is among the Gentiles because Peter was a racist. God still loved him, but he was a racist. The Gentiles would have never come into the faith if it hadn't been left up to Peter. And that's why Paul was sure Peter face to face. Because he felt like I have a monopoly. Don't ever let no big church or mega church intimidate you and make you feel like they got a monopoly. Everybody's not going to their church. Right. God ain't gonna help me up in here. I guarantee you more people don't go to church than go to a mega church. Y'all still with me? Yes, sir. Mr. Jake's got a mega church. I remember when he had a little small bank building. In Charleston, West Virginia, I prayed for it. When I was there, somebody had shot it to the church. They were racist, but he didn't stop. See, we we quit. We I told this one time. I said, "You're the know, best of a bunch of people preaching because they're trying to be like you, the way you are now." And sometimes you got to be the way that you are. People got to be the way you are in your community. Y'all quiet up here. Mm-hmm. And I want to put them down, but sometimes we so busy watching and looking what other people are doing, and that stuff will get in your spirit, and you'll get depressed. Sometimes you got to cut off social media. Right. Got to quit looking at other people programs and, and service and this and that, and you got to get on your knees and pray. I ain't talking just the pastor. I'm talking about the saint because you so busy, so they compare your praise team with somebody else's praise team, and your musician with somebody else's musician, and your style with somebody else's style. You know what I mean? You in a different community than Dallas. You in a different community than Houston. Y'all ain't saying that with me. You be in a different community than Los Angeles. But there are still people that need Jesus, whatever you are. You can't get away with somebody. Yeah. And God will help you if you keep your focus, if you keep spiritual, if you start affecting the community. Because somebody, just because you know religious leaders, don't mean that these folks know religious leaders. I travel all over the country and I ask them sometimes. I've had people tell me I've never been to church. Do you know T.D. Jakes? No. Do you know Joel Osteen? No. Do you know this one? No. Have you ever heard of Church of Adam Christ? No. You'd be surprised. Uh, people that don't know nothing about right. the Baptists, if they know the Baptists and Methodists or the Pentecostal or the Apostolic, they don't know nothing and they're not interested in all of that. Also, people want to know, can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? Can, can you help me? Can, can you help me? I'm not interested in the word of suit. I'm not interested in the word of talk. I don't know. I can care. Can I come the way you can come any kind of way? Just don't come with your daisy dudes. 